Hello, and we're live. Hi, guys. How you doing? Glad you could be here. Hi, Rhonda. How are you? I'm okay. How are you doing? Eh, you know. No, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. Hi, BB. Hi, Jinx. Hi, Catnit. Hi, Kay. Dark side, Moe's. Nice to see you guys. And, of course, Rhonda. Hi. Nice to see you. We've nice been uh, you too. trying to get this to go, and we did. I'm finally getting going here. And um, I just got a couple of announcements to make. Um, let me see. Where was I? Announcements. What was I going to say? Oh, the Discord. We finally got the Discord up and running. Everything is really looking good there. We got some great people in there doing wonderful things. Kay, Jinx, everybody. <laughs> we got yeah. a lot of people doing a lot of things. The rooms are filled. Well, hello, Cement Shoes. Nice to see you. And um, we got the Discord is full. It has everything you need to know about Daniel. And we are going to start doing some things in the Discord, like on certain nights, like this Tuesday. We are going to have um, a watch of the Michelle Markles, um, Daniel in the Den. And um, so at 7 o'clock this thursday if you're joined in our discord you can watch that that's a really good really good take on daniel's case and hi i don't recall another one of our great ones there <laughs> um and so we're gonna have events going on and we want what we really want to do is get um the uh, people in discord to participate with us and um, we'll be recording some of our discussions and using them for future podcasts. Um, like when we do Daniel in the Den, we'll might record it. I mean, I'll tell everybody or ask everybody's permission or whatever, but we'd like to really make this a community join in and give your views and, you know, really support Daniel and, and talk about his case. So that's what we're planning on doing on Discord. And I'm really looking forward to that because it's a great place to get to talk to people and get their views and share information and learn. Don't you think? Yep, I agree 100%. <laughs> we want it to be 100 We want it to be as interactive as possible. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I absolutely don't know hardly anything about the case, really, when it comes right down to it. I'm learning. Um, as well, I go yeah. for the most part. And so, um, you know, we have, we have other people like Kay. Um, oh my gosh, over Kay. Here, Kay over here in our chat. She yeah. is, she's Ooh, close with the family. She knows the family. She's, she's had, um, I, I don't know, 10 or more visits with Daniel personally. Um, she she lives is. in Enid. So she lives there. She knows the story from, from day one. And, Kay has, you know, shared a lot of information with us. Uh, She's Jinx. really helped build. Linda went over and, uh, uh, you know, got a hold of Jinx. And yeah. you guys all know how great Jinx is with research. And, man, you want to talk about inquiring mind. She wants to know right down to the word what yep. something means. And so she will dig until she finds it. And mm -hmm. we have, uh, I don't recall, uh, um, She's AKA our lawyer Cherie and little Barb. Yep. They, they both have come to Linda in the very beginning and said, Hey, you know, we want to help. What can we do to help? And so, um, and then without even asking their permission, um, I kind of just recruited, uh, dark side and, um, uh, catnip and, uh, Alice, some of these, I just was like adding them to our discord. Like, okay, I want this, you know, Jax and Zoe, they are, they're like our, our tech support. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, anybody that I've forgotten to mention, please don't feel, you know, like I've ignored you. I, we've, we've just been so fortunate to have so much help. Um, right. And the fall and play interest. Too. Yeah, foul play. Yeah, foul play has yeah. been absolutely wonderful to us. And all yeah. of their links are will be in the description along with everything else you need to know about Daniel yep. that we talk about tonight will be in 
the description box and please go check out ball play it and join them too if you haven't and they got some wonderful things everything you need to know about making a murderer is there with some yep. fantastic researchers dr suckman j Jax. we got bb we got Hanbury. Hanbury. we got them all everybody I mean, so we got everybody we got the yeah, whole, we, we got we them got all. The whole and, package <laughs> right a great community that really truly believes in team and I got to say, I can't press that enough. They really believe in team. I mean, they support us doing this and are more than willing to help us. And they come and watch our lives and it's fantastic. And they encourage, you know, and we encourage you to go see them. So, cause team is a good thing to have. It really is, especially in this kind of stuff. So I want to hoping that our team will grow and um, really enjoy learning um, Daniel's case because it is sad. It, it it is a really disturbing case because there's just nothing to match. Nothing matches. There's no DNA that's matchable to you know. I mean, it's just you'll find out. And we're gonna start <laughs> with <laughs> tonight. You want to introduce your thing while I get the thing up there? I do. Um, before I, um, I, I wanted to um, give some credit to Zoe, uh, the banner that you see behind um, Linda there, Daniel's Truth. I sent her a picture that I found on online and I said, fix this. This is what I want it to look like. And can you please do? And she just like within seconds, she had that all created for us. So um, uh, Zoe and like I said, Jack, Jack's trying to help me with uh, the presentation because as easy as it is to share the screen on this thing, it's not that <laughs> easy for me because <laughs> I, right. I, uh, I I tend to start letting the technical stuff get in my way and I just get all flustered and jacked up and, oh, sorry, Jack, not jacked up, but, you know, jacked up. <laughs> Hi, Jack. <laughs> Hi, Jack. <laughs> Hi, Jack. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and so Jack is helping me out with that. And I just kind of ended up going with what I could get, you know, to share tonight. Um, I'm not, I, I, I'm going to just be honest. I don't know how it's going to look. I'll do the best I can. And Linda has been very patient trying to explain all of it to me. And so, um, while we're it's getting low ready budget to get Linda productions here. So, you know, <laughs> you take what you get, we make mistakes. We are human and we are learning. So okay, learning, and, yeah, uh, and we are cool. starting from the get go. We got to know that, yep. you know, Daniel likes his mom's, Chocolate cookies. Mom's it? love chocolate, mom's cookies. chocolate cake. Chocolate, chocolate cake. cake. So yeah. we got to know Daniel kind of as a person. He's he's a normal, everyday, all American, you know, do the right thing kind of person. So keep that in mind as you're hearing some of these things because he doesn't change. Just his nope. story, his story that they get to him changes. You know, he's still wants to do what he wanted to do. You know, be a good cop yep. and. They changed. Uh, tonight, the the first presentation that I have is um, uh, going to be the Janie Ligon's uh, traffic stop, and as I was going through it, I was thinking, "Gosh, but we're going to cut. We don't know that about the case yet because you know that's not until we actually get into this investigation part." So while it might seem like I'm going to be jumping around a little bit in this, I'm really not jumping around. I'm just trying to. Uh, give you what happened on that very first night with the um with the traffic stop and so i will probably be mentioning things that you're like but wait i don't i where where did that happen or when did that happen i don't know but it will come um and please feel free to to jump ahead in the podcast to brian bates podcasts on our discord uh and listen you know you don't have to follow along with what we're doing here you can certainly go and listen to the podcast at your leisure and and you know get as much information um that way as well so um i am going to try to start oh oh no um oh, little barb she's am I here, here? Hi, little barb. she oh, says good. she's having barb trouble with this card we'll get you uh, to it honey. we'll fix it all right okay yeah we'll have to fix that for you okay yeah. so tonight like i said we're going to talk about um sorry we're going to talk about the uh, janie ligands or ligands i don't know how you pronounce it but we're going to talk about the traffic stop ligands um, okay 
ligands, ligands, ligands. Um, ligands. So um, on day one, which was June 18th, 2014, Daniel completed his shift at the OCD, OC, OCD, <laughs> OCD <laughs> Spring Lake Division Station. Um, and he finished his shift around 2 a.m. And according to uh, what he says, the um, he left a few. He he got, he arrived there a few minutes early, and his supervisor, um, you know, checked in and he was allowed to leave to go home. So down in the left-hand corner of this slide, I have a really crude Google Map thing that I did all by myself. <laughs> so um, if you want to click on that and follow along at some point, you can as well. But he left the Spring Lake Division Station and he turned right onto Prospect Avenue. And as he approached Northeast 50th Street, he turned off his AVL, um, which basically took him offline as far as kind of like a GPS. It kind of took him offline, which uh, you may or may not know was had been a recent change in the, the, the department that they couldn't do, that the officers could no longer do that. If they had to take home a car, they were not supposed to turn off their AVL until they got home. But Daniel had been used to turning it off prior to this. And so even though it was a new policy, he turned it off anyway, as he had always had done. So he turned uh, left onto Northeast 50th Street towards Lincoln Boulevard. As he approached Lincoln Boulevard, just ahead of him was 57-year-old Janie Ligons. League. Daniel like noticed. Fig. A, League. She said, uh, sorry to lig. interrupt, but Kay says it's like pronounced like fig. So fig. ligands. So ligands. Okay. Sorry. Okay. It's my, uh, sorry. That's my, um, my grammar sneaking in. I feel like with the, it should have been two G's if it was ligands, but it's her last name. She can say it how she wants, right? <laughs> right on. Um, so anyway, uh, Daniel noticed a slight swerve um, in that car ahead of him. Um, and he decided Rather than turning right onto Lincoln Boulevard and heading home, he decided that he was going to go ahead and go through the intersection and pull over the vehicle that he had seen the swerve. Just wanted to make sure that the person who was driving that car was um, not impaired and that, and that they were safe to be driving. So um, he uh, turned on his strobe lights, the big bright lights at the top of the car, and pulled the car over. And um, after approximately 13 minutes of what Daniel describes as a normal stop, um, he determined that uh, Miss Liggins was not impaired and he allowed, he decided he would allow her to leave the scene. But he told her as he was getting ready to, to leave her that, you know, he was going to follow her for a period of time, you know, just to make sure that she, you know, got, going, got to where she was uh, planning to go. He never really intended to follow her home. He just wanted to make sure that she was safe and not impaired. And he wanted to make sure that he made the right decision by letting her go. So when you watch the uh, video, at some point when you, when you watch the video, um, you will, you'll see that Daniel makes his U-turn as he is allowing her to leave. And he makes a U-turn, and she also immediately makes her a U-turn. Um, Ms. Ligons does, Ligons. And um, he was kind of waiting there for a second, and she was taking too long, and he just thought, you know, he felt confident in his decision to allow her to leave, and so he just decided to go ahead and go. So he went ahead and pulled out, but Janie Ligons pulled in right behind him, uh, and why that's important is, you know, you'll learn eventually, but um, the reason that that's important to know is because in her report to Kim Davis later, she will say that uh, that he, he made a U-turn and left and took off at a high rate of speed and essentially leaving her in the dust. Um, and you'll find out that that is not the case when you watch that video. So, um, Ms. Liggins in her reports, you know, indicates that there was some traffic that morning um, and that there were vehicles that drove by while she was stopped. And she said that no one stopped, including a car who pulled into a parking lot. 
I have went over this video several times, many, many times, you know, slow, fast, every way I could. And I can see a car pull in, but I don't myself, I don't see where it ever leaves or parks or anything else. Um, uh, but I, I also was questioning why would a car, why would passerbys stop? She indicates that you know they drove, cars were driving by, but no one stopped. And I just I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't do that, especially at two o'clock in the morning. I am not going to no. stop and see why an officer has pulled over a driver. Well, would, <laughs> it, yeah, it wouldn't at any time. I yeah, wouldn't. And I wouldn't. That's a normal traffic stop. Why is any citizen going to stop right. and ask a cop what he's doing unless yeah. you see him, you know, struggling or or see something strange? Like, I mean, if I seen a cop standing there supposedly getting, um, you know, some, you know, something funky going on and they're like she's claiming, I think I might stop at that because yeah, there's I, something wrong there. If you but think if you can thing, see like you know. some sort of activity that's going on mm -hmm. that wouldn't appear to be normal you might stop but i would at two o'clock in the morning i don't think i'd even stop then so yeah janie liggins makes some really interesting um you know comments in her report that just kind of i, I don't know what the motive is for some of her comments but they're hers so she can say them how she and wants we'll, right we'll, we'll get into them too because yeah. she does do some strange things yeah, she we can. There's a lot of interesting comments that Janie Liggins makes uh, in her report. Um, but I just I don't know about anybody else, but I wouldn't I wouldn't stop. Um, you know, when I you know to check out an officer who's got a, a you know somebody pulled over, that's just not something that I would feel would be safe. Number one, or none of my business. So yeah, um, I do. In the uh, in the video, um, we I, I I looked at the stop and it begins at 2:02:06 a.m. in the morning, and that's when he turns on his strobe lights and pulls her over. And the strobe lights go off at approximately 2:15:19 a.m., which is about 13 minutes and 13 seconds. And that's when both Daniel and Janie Ligons uh, make their uh, respective U-turns and and turn left onto um, Lincoln Boulevard. Daniel, at that point, is ahead of Janie Ligons, and she is right behind him. So when she makes that uh, state in her statement, when she says that he took off at a high rate of speed, maybe he did. I mean, we can't see how fast he was going, but she she left uh, just as high a rate of speed right behind him, and you'll see that when you watch the video. Um, when, when you get a chance to watch the video. Um, but what is definitely um, easy to see is that you can't see anything that's going on in that stuff. That's what I mean. You can't see anything. <laughs> right. That's so, a good, very good point. Yeah, you, you <laughs> don't see anything. And as far as I could tell, at the very end, when the stop is essentially over, you can see what we can assume is Janie Liggins uh, pull over or walk over to her car and get in. Daniel turns off the lights and he gets or gets in his car and he and uh, he gets in his car, turns off the lights and you can see them then, you know, making their plans to to leave. And Daniel originally had, um, as I mentioned before, he was going to follow her for, you know, a, a brief amount of time. I don't think he really indicated how much, but um, he, he, she was fiddling around doing something, not, le not ready, you know, not leaving as quickly as he thought she should have or could have. Right. And what we find out later when we go through her investigative report is that she, for some reason, she thought, uh, Daniel may have taken her cell phone. And so it appears that she may have been sitting there looking for her cell phone, um, while, you know when they were supposed to be leaving. And so maybe, you know, he thinks maybe that's why she was just sitting there, you know, wasting time was looking for her cell phone. Again, we're not really certain yet what the pur purpose of that is or why she was desperate. I think there must be something in her cell phone that was uh, going to be an issue maybe at some point um, in her, in the rest of her evening. But, right. but it's very important to just remember that, Regardless of what you're going to hear um, the next in the next show when we go through the interrogation, um, 
when officer or rather um investigator kim davis and rocky gregory when they're when they're telling daniel you, you know what are we going to see we have the video of the of the stop so you know are we going to see this and that and i won't you know there's some little tidbits in there i don't want to drop right now if you haven't already seen or heard the interview but um you know they basically tell him which you know due to the read technique they can <laughs> um they you know they lie to him and tell him you know we said we know we know what you did we can see it in the video and i'm paraphrasing but um uh, you when you watch that video for yourself you will see there's no possible way that they could have seen you anything see. in That's that video point. because you yeah. just can't see it that um, is the point you look at that, that video yeah you cannot see anything at all you don't That's see anything point. that's right right so, so um like I said, we can see movement from one vehicle to the other, but no specific actions. So, um, uh, again, I think it's interesting to note that she says that the officer, you'll hear later, that the officer pulled away at a high rate of speed, and that is just not necessarily the case. Um, uh, again, I'm still kind of stuck for some reason on this whole thing where somebody pulled into the parking lot. Um, and I'm I still trying to it. look at that. I can't see anything. If any of you have seen anything or know anything about that, I would love to hear because she seems to uh, that seemed to make a she seemed to make a point of making sure that we knew that for right. or that Kim Davis knew that rather. Right. So this is really just a very basic introduction to the main event that started what ultimately becomes Daniel's greatest nightmare. And a couple of things, uh, I don't know, rhetorical, I guess you could say, uh, comments or thoughts that I have. Um, uh, like we said, we, there's no way that we could prove, no way in the video that we can see anything inappropriate from Daniel or anybody else, um, for that matter. And uh, we learn eventually, like I said, that, that uh, Janie Ligon's um, lied to investigator Davis when she reported that Daniel sped away because uh, she made it sound like he was, you know, she was just sort of sitting there and all of a sudden he just left her there hanging there in the dust. And I don't know if that was a way to, uh, that she could make it sound like he was, you know, did his dirty deed and then hurried up to get the heck out of Dodge or what. I don't, I would imagine that was probably her point, but, um, yeah. She also lied, and we'll find this out again, that, that when she said, because she had told Daniel that she didn't, she didn't, she said, I don't drink, sir, I don't do drugs, and, you know, she told these things to Daniel, but she also reports to Kim, investigator Kim Davis, that she had, oh, I did smoke a couple of marijuana joints that night, or, you know, however she says it in the report, so right. she lied, that's at least two lies that you're going to hear eventually from Janie Ligons. Um, right. So these are just kind of some uh, really uh, blunt rhetorical questions that I have also in my mind. Um, well, the first one, I, let's pay attention to that one, okay? Because this is something this, that is continually brought up in the investigation. And um, by, that, just a side note, Kay says, Daniel did tell her he was going to follow her home, although he oh, only well, intended to follow her for several blocks. For several and blocks. And then trail off. Sure. Right. Thank okay. you, Kay. Yes, that's what, see, I'm telling you, Kay's, Kay, on the ball. get her on here doing all this talking. <laughs> yes, she knows this um, inside and out. She knows, the, she'll set me straight too. She's definitely going to set us straight if we get something incorrect. So yes. we appreciate that. Yes, um, we but I really, I just wonder, I, I cannot imagine that any female, the average female out there, after she's been pulled over by a male law enforcement officer, I can't even in my wildest imagination uh, asking the officer if I, they wanted her to raise her shirt up when they were um, talking about, you know, do you have any drugs on you or any weapons or something that might hurt me or blah, blah. I, I, the last thing I would say is, nope, I'm clean. I don't have anything on me. Do you want me to lift my shirt up to prove it? There's just no way. <laughs> and, uh, but Janie Ligons, or Ligons, you will find out that she did indeed ask him, or she says she asked him. Um, and I you believe want, he actually yeah. says in the interrogation that, that she did say that. Yeah. Um, do you want me to lift my shirt up? That's yeah. just odd. 
and we'll all we'll all recognize this if you've ever been pulled over. It's called a clasp and shake, and that's oh, what they term it. And it is well known all around. So it's not just something that is is for that police department, oh, but it's I, a term uh, they use, and they're not supposed to use, I guess, or it's just a term they use. But that's what I know it as. It's a clasp and shake. You grab the middle shake. of your bra and you shake it, and mm -hmm. whatever's there should fall out. <laughs> Not lifting over it up your shirt. Showing, over yeah. your shirt. Over your and shirt. Let me just tell you, um, some of you might know I worked in the state mental hospital here in Utah for mm, about four years, maybe five years. And um, there were times when I would work on the girls' youth unit. And any time the girls left the, their unit, the building, whenever we came back in, we had to, you know, do a basic, uh, very, very careful um uh, I don't know if light is the proper word, but vague light pat down. But part of that pat down was um, very much like what with law enforcement, you know, they they knew that they had to over their shirt. They had to pull out their bra and shake it. So we right. didn't call it a clasp and shake and we never touched the, the girls, of course. But, you know, that was a. Uh, that was something that we used even in the hospital, you know, to keep contraband from coming back onto the unit. So, so yeah, it's and, the thing. And Daniel says that too. He says yeah. he, he did his normal the way you do a a male does a female with the back of his hands, back of your hand, just just mm -hmm. back of his hands touching, you know, like down her back and, and around her waist, and, and then she did the clasp and shake. And so it's yeah, it's nothing of. Do you want me to lift my shirt? There's nothing, up? yeah. There's nothing you know. dirty or nefarious or wrong about it if it's done the right. proper way. Which you right, know. so yeah. But she offered to to pull up her shirt and improve. So uh, right. that will become important too when you hear the next the next show um, in the interrogation. But I have a question, and this is gonna, you know, I think we're all adults here, so I feel like it's safe for me to say this, but. Would you ever, and this is something you're going to learn in the uh, report that she makes to Kim Davis later, but would you ever, ladies, would you ever agree ever, with ever, a ever. Male officer's penis in your mouth under any circumstances, any circumstances? Absolutely not. You ever. Just, <laughs> yeah, never. And, I, you know, yeah. that would it wouldn't even be more. brought up. Well, yeah. You know, First of all, and yeah. if it was, no, it's I would just, rather go to jail. I would go to jail. I'd rather have a gun to my head. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's, you know, just, it's a sexual assault that I would never be willing to agree to. Uh, right. And you're going to, this is going to be something that will also play over in many, many different. Um, um, right. And in real towards Daniel. Right. And real, real important, like you'll see in, in the interrogation, which we're going to cover in, on, in our next one. But he, you'll notice that they use, I would say it's the read technique because they lie. And they say, are we going to see this on that video? And oh, how come we've seen this on that video? And we've seen you doing this on that video. And she gets, let's say Blinkwinkle gets, it gets a little I don't know. Kind of funny, yeah. I think. So, and you, we'll just see how that is next week. But I just yeah. pay attention to the way he's the interviewed because it's it's a tricky thing, and it's and they're allowed to lie, and and I just don't understand that. Even lying to your fellow workers, you know. I mean, come on. There's some kind of bond there. There doesn't seem to be here. I I think Blinkwinkle just got something in her head right from get go. Which she admits it's weird, but yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay, that was next thing I just thought. I just I'm just curious. I was just wondering how many ladies that are in our chat over there are in our audience. Just ever. put a one if you would. <laughs> put a two if under <laughs> never, never, never. <laughs> or just a flat out hell no would work too. I just I don't oh, no. I don't personally know anybody who would ever agree to that. Um, just because they were afraid of, you know. Well, you'll 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 hear why her reasons why she did that uh, when, right. she, when we hear her investigation report. And, but, and Janie is um, the only really one that just comes forward to her from herself. She just decides she's going to do this, or her daughter does, or something. I'm not quite sure, but she is the only one of Daniel's accusers that did it on her own. 
she wasn't once thought out. So just keep that in mind too. Yeah, we, that's important. You know. Well, ha and had we not had the had had her, you know, had she not made the false accusation to begin with, we might not even be doing this live right now. So, right. In fact, I feel confident that we wouldn't. Yeah, I agree. Um, so some of the things that I I'm curious about. Um, what are some possible reasons <laughs> no, Megan no way. Higgins might have chosen to go to her daughter's apartment that night and make the the accusations that she did? That, you know, why why what are some reasons why she went to her daughter's house instead of going back home to to her, her home, right? Boyfriend's house, her own home. And here's something that I I don't know if anybody else has thought about this, but why in the world um, for all you mothers out there in in our audience? Would you ever drag your children out of bed at 3 a.m. and and your boyfriend out of bed at 3 a.m. and this is what um, I Miranda I can't remember what the daughter's name is Kay I'm sure Kay knows um, but she dragged her kids out of bed at 3 a.m. and grabbed her boyfriend up out of bed at 3 a.m. and they all got in the car and drove around to to oh she lives with their daughter oh hmm. she does? I thought she lived with their boyfriend. I thought she lived with Richard Long. I'm, now I'm really confused. <laughs> okay, I need to do some more researching and studying, I guess. I apologize um, for for saying that. Well, either way, why Marissa. Would Melissa, why, Marissa, Marissa, why would she grab the kids up out of bed at 3 a.m., though? And go search and, for a cop. And to go, you know, to go, to go to the police department and report this. And then, you know, it just sounded weird to me. Just sounded weird to me. Um, we might as well forget this part. She doesn't live with her boyfriend. Yeah, I guess, I, <laughs> go on to the next one. Well, you know, but I <laughs> believe that I, I, I guess I must. Oh, he lives with the point. daughter too. Oh heck! Well, okay, so Maybe let's scratch it. this whole thing tonight, then. <laughs> because no, 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 that's fine. You're giving us the <laughs> I basics. I misunderstood. I misunderstood what I had read. Um, right, that's all it is, and it's easily corrected. So she lives again, with I with her daughter and her daughter. boyfriend. So that kind of changes then my whole next question is, you know, um, I because I just thought, why would you go to the dot to your daughter's house first and and make those statements? And I so I thought one of my big things was that I thought that she had done that um, and made this big farce of an accusation because she was like, oh, crap. Now I got to go home to, to my boyfriend or fiance and, you know, tell him why I'm off. It's, you know. She still could have done that. She could have right. went there and said, I'm late. Right. This yeah. Is I'm late why. Because this is why. And, but I just thought, you know, she was trying to avoid trouble with the boyfriend. And, and if she had some outrageous story to tell him that, you know, she and might she be probably in was. trouble. So, she probably yeah. was. I mean, that's still, because he lived you know, there. still a possibility. Yes. Yes. So I'll do better research. Um, I, <laughs> I must have misunderstood that from the investigation from, uh, uh, that for, with Kim Davis. So, okay. So on to confirmation bias. Um, I'm, I'm sure that most of us know by now what confirmation bias is. I think we've experienced that in other cases that we follow. But confirmation bias is the tendency to interpret new evidence as confirmation of one's existing beliefs or theories. Or is Kim Davis and Rocky Gregory just the pictures of confirmation bias? Probably, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. We'll have to figure that out as time goes on. But I just want to, you know, have you guys think of some things. Does Kim Davis exhibit confirmation bias in Daniel's case? And does Rocky Gregory? Um, I say yes, because Kim Davis, um, you know, for one thing, she was well aware that the department was under the eyes, the watchful eyes. Um, of, uh, I believe it was uh, Detective Musney, 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 another name I can't Musney, pronounce. Musney. Yeah. Um, but, know. you know, he told her, you know, we're, you know, we're watching, you know, we're, we're, we, we're going to be watching to see what happens. And, you know, so you better make sure you're getting this guy and getting him fast and getting it, getting it done. Right. There was a lot going on. A lot there, was, of, it, there was a lot of yep. civil unrest, you know, based on, you know, at the time uh, we hadn't quite gotten to the Ferguson yet, case yet. I believe that took place sometime in August, but there was still, you know, a growing, um, 
uh, right. unrest with, you know, the black community Muesli. and Black Lives Matter, Musney. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah Tim, Lieutenant Musney. Um, and so, you know, there was all of that was going on. So, you know, you kind of have to think, okay, well, was Kim Davis, was she just aware of that and, th and, and thought I better just hurry up and, you know, grab whichever cop comes to the surface first and, and just go off of that? Or, or was it, was it simply because, um, as you'll learn, in, uh, if you haven't watched Daniel in the Den yet by Michelle Malkin, which they will. Um, yep, you will. I think this Thursday will night be doing that together. Um, but uh, you know, she believed uh, Janie Ligons. She she met Janie Ligons at the hospital that night or that morning rather, and uh, immediately believed what she told her about um, um, Daniel assaulting her and. Um, she didn't have any evidence. A SANE test hadn't been conducted yet. Nothing had been done yet, but but Kim Davis just had a gut feeling, and you'll hear her say that. I just she had a gut, I just felt it in my gut and I believed her. Her and eyes will tell you. So <laughs> I so that I is that to me that's a form of caught that's confirmation bias when you take that without any evidence, without any eyewitnesses, without any tests without any dna or trace evidence or anything that can be proved confirmed uh, proven and confirmed that is definitely uh that's that's the definition of confirmation bias to me yeah and here's a good uh, point you have too about the the photo lineup go ahead and say that i mean that, that, that was brilliant right so yeah so, so, so one of the questions that we can think about and consider is kim davis just simply a narcissistic liar maybe my gut tells me she probably could be <laughs> um yeah. but uh i i want you guys to really think about if you haven't already really think about why would kim davis and rocky D gregory never use a photo lineup in their attempts to confirm the alleged perpetrator of these very serious accusations of, of a fellow officer, and I'm not talking just about late uh, Janie Light Liggins, but you know, in the others that we will see, there's a reason why, and and it and I I believe she actually uh, Kim Davis actually gives a lame reason for why um, they don't use a photo lineup, but not one uh, other than. Terry Morris, I believe. Morris? Terry Morris. I I, uh, I think it was Terry Morris. Other than her testimony or her accusation, no photo lineup was ever used. And um, there was uh, nothing it, really collaborated to be pinpoint on for sure thing. There, they just right. didn't. They more. She used her intuition, is what she used. In her intuition, and she it, will even and, speak yeah. to that when, when the judge, I believe it's the judge, asked during the trial, um, you know, why didn't she ever, well, you know, consider using the photo lineup? Yeah, and 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 one thing she says in um, Michelle's interview with them, which will will be showing on Discord too, is that she says, well, one is not so easy to get a conviction on but 13 yeah yeah i think we can do something there we can now, right there we can. that statement there really bothers me because she had one that that possibly could be it this lady we're talking about now okay which turns out that there was no evidence at all and if you do that test and you find no, no evidence then you would say okay this is not good either this is just you know <laughs> I don't know why she made these accusations, but it turns out that they're, they're false. Okay, but she she doesn't care. <laughs> Kim does not care. No, Blinkwinkle care. could care less. Yeah, she's so, just yeah. trying to. There you go. She she's keeping in mind that she's being watched and that the department's being watched. So maybe that's maybe that's all yeah. it is. But I think it's more than that. Um, yeah, I think so too. Daniel, the kind of the kind of man that Daniel is, um, I think, is best described in just this one post that he made, and um, it appears it was on his mother's birthday, March sixteenth, two thousand fourteen. He says, "In my line of work, I see things that the average citizen might never come across in their life. I see a lot of broken families on a daily basis. I'm blessed and fortunate to have a loving mom and dad." I wouldn't be the man I am now if it wasn't for them. Love you both. Happy birthday, mom. Uh, 
that's all just so guys. that's just all American, you know. I have five sons, you know, I, I, my sons, I, my sons would say things like that. And, you know, that's just a, that's just a normal person, a normal young man who, who loves his mother and loves his family and, you know, wants to do good in, in society and, and help people. And he had uh, no, he has no prior anything. Yeah. He was, he was a little bit, um, maybe rough with some of his pullovers and things like that, but he has absolutely, even since a child, no, you know, he, he wasn't bad in school. He played football. He played sports. He got along with everybody. He was like everybody's best friend. There was absolutely no prejudice in him. He, um, you, you'll see in some of the interviews that they do. Um, he, he um, says, you know, his friends say, no, that's not claw. That's that's what the, some of his friends yeah. call him was claw. That, that's not him. And I'm here to show that. And he was a black man standing there in court. So you'll see yeah. that he just really is a guy trying to be a good a good person. Just trying to be what his parents made him, you know, taught him to be. So, right. and and I, you know, I think it's worth mentioning too. Um, we'll find this out later, but you know, worth mentioning tonight too. Um, I. I there, Daniel had, I believe, 17, well, a total of 19, I believe, um, uh, oh, reports or, or not reprimands, but reports. Um, for me, for handling file, rough, really, for, roughly for handling things. or something. But, but two, um, all of, all but two of those were self-reported. You know, he had the foresight to, you know, he knew he didn't do anything wrong, but, you know, because, you know, that might be perceived one way or another by, you know, whoever it was he was dealing with. He reported them himself, you know, and somebody who's trying to be dirty and nasty and assaultive and, and whatnot doesn't, um, he doesn't you know, the wouldn't, wouldn't do that. Wouldn't just, right. wouldn't do that. I, at least I don't think so. That's my confirmation bias. Right. So, um, <laughs> so but next time on Daniel's Truth Denied, we will be going over Daniel's interrogation. It's a, it's a lengthy interrogation itself. Um, it's about two hours, I suggest. I think it would be a good idea, if you can, to go and watch it or, and listen to it yourself. Um, yeah. Just because there's so much information in it. Um, uh, if you haven't already, go check that out. You can find it um, in our Discord um, in Brian Bates Investigates. Uh, uh, it's, it's podcast episode two, or you can go to holtzclawtrial.com. That's Daniel or Brian Bates' actual website for the case. But I do want to warn you to be prepared because it's definitely that interrogation is not safe for work. Um, at about nine minutes and 19 seconds into the interrogation, um, Rocky Gregory decides that it's okay and appropriate to tell Daniel that he masturbates right and left-handed. And then Kim Davis chimes in, you know, which hand she prefers. And this is just the, this is the way the, the entire interrogation you know, it's just kind of sprinkled with countless different topics and different kinds of inappropriate but sexually insulting and assaultive, in my opinion, uh, comments and questions and, and things. And um, uh, he, it just, it, while it's, while, while they're adults and they, you know, they can speak frankly and openly and honestly using whatever terminology they feel they need to, that's all acceptable, but not in the ways that Kim Davis and Rocky Gregory presented. It's a little it's bit a different way of disturbing, it's a different way very of disturbing. <laughs> At least it was disturbing for me. Yeah. Um, during the, when you, when you listen to the interrogation, there will be a, uh, some times in, in, in there where Brian Bates will interject his own context comments for context purposes. So um, that, Dink says uh, a sexual harassment interview in her opinion. Yeah, I think so too. I, and that's what I that's what I said too. I just felt like they should be <laughs> there should be some sort of a, you know charge yeah. against them for sexual yeah. assault because they sexually harassed and assaulted him as far as I'm concerned. And so yeah. um but yeah, you don't <laughs> want to listen to it. You don't want to listen to it with uh, you know, depending Little kids on around. who 
Yeah, you definitely want to be careful who's around when you're listening. If you're under 15, please leave the room. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Oh, God. Susan's voice to do that. Yeah. (laughs) Are you done reading with this one? I'll shut it up so we can talk to our people. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you can you can uh you can take that down. But uh, again, like I said, I obviously I <laughs> understood some things, and I'll have to go back and you know uh, correct myself with some of the things that I. Um, you corrected yeah, yourself but, here. It's fine. Well, Kay, we, we all are learning. Kay's got <laughs> all the knowledge and stuff, so I just want to make sure I got the future ones correct, and I'm not making mistakes again. That's okay. the whole idea, you know. I want to present this you know, we want to present this in a way that we get the the right information and the accurate information um, to people, uh, especially if they aren't familiar with the case. You know, I don't want to be right. responsible for giving the wrong information. So oh, um, totally agree. And if, if we, if I, if they, somebody finds something wrong, like Kay did, she's great at it. Thank you. Let us know. Cause we definitely want to be putting out nothing but the facts. We don't, you know, yeah, we have our speculations we throw in there like we just did, but it's really going to be based on facts and um, you know, that's what it is. It's not, a, we're not chasing no rabbit holes because this stuff is already here for us. We're just going to talk about it, you know? So that's what we want to do. We want to talk about it, get you on board and um, just, you know, be a voice for Daniel, you know, it's a really messed up case. Uh, yeah. There, and, and it, it's frustrating. I believe it was March 9th uh, this year. I believe it was March 9th that um, his appeal, uh, his motion for to appeal was denied um, without even, you know, there's just so many, so many, you know, secret hearings and you know, appeals being denied without hearings, just all kinds of really weird, uh, weird's not the right word, but um, nefarious activities that go on yeah. in this case. Yeah, and um, and we'll get to we'll get to find out about each and every one of them because we got the great jinx and she really can tell you about people. I'll tell you what. So yeah, you yeah. know we're 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 trying to you know present the case to uh, each person victim. Some of them I would call victims. I do believe they've been victimized by the police and by Rocky yes. and Blinkwinkle for sure. And then there's a couple that I I really don't. I just don't see anything other than them jump wanting to jump on the bandwagon, you know, yep. and the lies like JJ is saying now that come out of their mouth when they're talking to Daniel and he's like more than willing to help give everything, you know, I mean, and you'll see some mistakes. So please check out that interrogation. And, and there's some things in there that being in these cases, you'll probably pick up right on a uh, right away when you see it, but I didn't. And then when I seen it, I was like, what is he doing? So <laughs> you know? <laughs> what is yeah. It? yeah. And, and that's just it. And I, you know, Linda kind of touched on something I definitely wanted to, to point out or bring out, or at least get people thinking about the, there's a majority of these ladies who, um, who uh, accused Daniel of these crimes who are victims themselves not victims of Daniel, but victims of um, uh, uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle and music. Blinkwinkle. Whatever, <laughs> Blinkwinkle, whatever. You know, they're, they're she goes like this all the time. She's victims, like, they're victims of the, of the law enforcement and not of Daniel. And so right. those ladies I feel bad for. I feel bad that they were used and taken advantage of. And, and you know, they're, we don't know yet what, what was held over their heads to make, you know, some of these accusations, but they're victims. But Linda also touched on the handful of ladies who kind of came out of the woodwork all on their own and started making up some little uh, of their own little versions of what happened to them. And I'm just, you, you can, it might sound like a harsh word, but those ladies are liars and they are not victims. Yep. And I don't agree with, them being um, portrayed as victims, and I don't feel right. sorry for them. I do feel sorry for the Terry Morrises and yes. some of the yes. other ladies. That you know, those are ladies. Those ladies were abused by the yeah. system and not by Daniel. So they do and, have my sympathies. Yeah, for, you know. 
Or you get to time. see you get to see that the dirty cops, no matter where they are and what case we look at, are pretty much the same. They have an agenda that is there in the beginning, and you can see it. And I think that's our um, advantage if we've been in this and you know, like making a murder. I mean, you see and you and now when you see another case, even though they're like you know years away from each other, but the corrupt cops, you see, see the pattern with them. There's something, there's an agenda there. They, oh, they got an intuition or they don't have an intuition, you know, in some cases, <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, the things that they do, um, even outsourcing, you know, their, these victims and accusers, when do you do that? I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, there's just things done that are done so and blatantly in your face. And how could they get it wrong? That's what I think is so frustrating here, don't you? The the blatant in your face wrong that they still yeah. allowed, you know? Yeah, they, they accepted. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then we get to talk about, too, in the future, we get to talk about Elaine Taylor and was there a conflict of interest with her and Rocky Gregory or not? I think there was. <laughs> You know, um, the um, prosecutor saying some, um, you know, <laughs> some DNA was there and it wasn't even that DNA. I mean, right. Yeah. There's, lying to there's, the jury. You know, there's just a lot of things there, you know, and and as Kay points out, a lot of different stories from a lot of different people. And there's a lot of charges. Thirty six charges. 36 he was charges, charged, yeah. you know, not charged, but 18 of them then. Anyway, he. Yeah. Never changed his story. He's like Stephen. Didn't change his story. More than willing to help. Do whatever you can. You'll see in the interrogation. He says, "Do whatever you can. DNA, swab it. Do it. To, take clothes. Take my phone. Do whatever." And they don't do a lot. They don't do a lot. That's for sure. It will be so. if you're able to watch the interview. It'll be. It'll probably be more effective because you'll mm -hmm. you'll see at the end of that interrogation. You'll see how Rocky Gregory completely 100% mishandles what would be considered evidence, you know, if, if, if we were to believe anything that they were saying, uh, yeah, just, you know, if you can watch the video, it, you definitely see a lot, you know, there's a lot more to be said for the interview right. as well, just by watching, you know, what he does near the end of that video with the handling of Daniel's clothing. Um, it's appalling just did that that should go like it it don't, work. Been, you don't do it that um, way it's not something yeah. you do so be yeah cause for dismissal and all kinds of things but you know anyway there's you know, we got a lot to talk about in future episodes and um, right and you, know, you really can learn a lot come into the discord and just mm -hmm. there's everything you i mean believe me Kay has put this house full she yes, and, she and, and uh, whoever else has been posting i mean i i i um, I don't recall, I, you know, we've got a lot of good people in there doing, you know, Kay's there all the time. I mean, I swear she lives in our house there. <laughs> she's, <laughs> yeah. she's always there to and, answer and questions. It, and, she's very polite. She's very nice. And um, I'm telling you, it's a good place. It's comfortable there. And we're going to start doing, you know, get you guys involved here and get in on some of these podcasts and your opinion and just let's be a really strong voice for Daniel. Let's free Daniel. Let's get it out there. Let's talk about him. You know, it's just, let's talk about Daniel. <laughs> yep, that's, that's all I can say. That's how we'll, you know, be able to, to, you know, hopefully get to a place where we can fight for us. I mean, we're fighting for his freedom now, but you know, we need to, we need a big army. He needs a yeah, big army. Needs so. So yes, yeah. that's what that's well what thank you for to do. your wonderful presentation, Rhonda. I enjoyed it and I appreciate all your hard work. And look at that lovely banner we have for our Discord that her yes. and Zoe did. And all the links you need are down below in the description. If you haven't, hit that subscribe, hit the little bell. It's, it's some people call it the dinner bell. We'll just call it the Daniel Bell. <laughs> so, <laughs> Daniel Bell, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't. To ring the Daniel Bell. And really, thank you so much for joining us on this. We really appreciate it. And we hope to see a lot more people there and giving us their voice. And Daniel, their, Daniel, his voice. Got anything else to say, Rhonda? Uh, no, no. I, um, I think 
I think I've said enough for one day <laughs> and uh, I think we'll be just carry over the conversation will be great. We'll be able to have great conversations over in discord. So that's yeah. where the action will be. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you everybody. Thank you to our mods. Thank you, Kay. Thank you everybody who's made this possible. And thank you, Rhonda. I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoy your hard work. Well, do. It's, it it does take a lot to do it. I'm not a slide person. Everybody knows that. So <laughs> I'm just the talk talker. I don't do that stuff. So that to me is really a lot of work and I appreciate it. So thank you so much. And you guys, um, we will see you next Tuesday. Same time, same not my verbiage channel. Thank you for, <laughs> very much for coming. We'll catch you guys Thank later. You. Bye, everybody.